Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. here and let's check out this gorgeous scene that showcases just how good Unity can look. This is based on the high definition render pipeline, which is all about giving you the absolutely best visuals possible. This render pipeline is meant to target consoles and PCs, as opposed to the universal render pipeline, which is meant for running games on any device. With HDRP, you can make some extremely realistic, stunning looking visuals, and all of it based on real world values. So if you set your materials, cameras and lights with the exact same values as they have in the real world, you should get some excellent visuals. I've already made a video a while ago introducing AGRP, in there I talk about how to install it or how to add it to an existing project, I go over the various options and tools and everything you can do to make your game look gorgeous. Check that video linked in the description. Now this one is the new template that just came out with Unity 2020.2 and it showcases the power of AGRP in three gorgeous scenarios. First of all, you've got an outside scene lit by the sun, then you've got an indoor scene which also has some indoor lights as well as some sunlight, and then a completely indoor scene. They all look extremely realistic, and despite looking so good, it is also very performant. I've got a GeForce 980 which is a 5 year old GPU, and the scene is running at 80 to 100 frames per second. So it looks great and plays great. Now let's explore the scene to see how it works. But before we do that, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on just about any topic. Explore new skills and improve your current ones at your own pace with unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes for every skill level. Learn skills related to game development, like the basics of computer science. Then learn modeling in Blender by making your very first 3D character. And then learn the basics of animation with all the important principles of squash and stretch, timing and so on. Being a subscription means you don't have to buy each class individually. So for less than $10 a month with the annual subscription, you have full access to all the classes you could possibly want. With so many classes available, you can learn skills related to game development, but also improve on any hobbies you have. For example, learn how to play the guitar, learn electronics with a Arduino and a Raspberry Pi, or learn how to be more productive in life. Join now with the link in the description, and for a limited time, the first 1000 people will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Thanks to Skillshare for supporting the video and supporting the channel. Starting off on the outdoor scene, we've got our nice sunroof and over here we've got a really good looking Unity Sphere. So you can really zoom in and see just how much detail it has. So it's got some roughness, normals, looks very metallic and has a really nice shine. And it all interacts perfectly with the outdoor light which is just a standard directional light. On the scene you can inspect everything so you can click directly on the wall and over here see all the various materials. And as you can see it's using the standard AGRP lit shader. So over here you see tons and tons of options, this is just how detailed AGRP can be. So you don't need any complex custom made shaders, you can use the standard AGRP lit shader and everything looks gorgeous. So you've got the sphere and then this whole thing is lit by the directional light, so you can select it and see how it's set up. And you can see how it's defined by temperature and intensity just the same as in real world values. So over here you've got a certain temperature, you can make the sunlight a bit colder or warmer, you can play around the intensity and so on. Then on the camera itself you also have a lot of physical values, so here if you expand this, yep there you go, so you can play around with sensor size, ISO, shutter speed and so on. So like I mentioned before, if you have a knowledge of photography in the real world, you can really apply that same knowledge right here. Then on the scene view, if you look at it like this, it looks all very clean, but you can toggle on the gizmos, and yep now you see everything that makes up this gorgeous scene. So one of the things that you see, you see tons of decals in order to make the scene look really alive. If you select on decals and manually enable and disable them, you can see the huge difference. There's tons of them placed all the way throughout the level in order to make the scene look more natural, and if you disable them it looks a bit too perfect. So this is using just the standard decal projector. And in the hierarchy you can also see and select the light probe and see how you have light probes all the way throughout this level, as well as the same thing for a whole bunch of reflection probes. So right here we've got a reflection probe for the outside, another one for the inside and so on. Okay, so this is the outdoor scene looking really gorgeous. Then as we go inside we come across my favorite scene. So this is a really good looking scene combining both indoor and outdoor lighting. And it's got a really nice plant encased in glass. So right away you can see some gorgeous volumetric lights, so look at that looking really good. Then you can see some particles made with VFX ref, so look at those butterflies, yep those are particles. You can also see a whole bunch of dust scattered throughout in here. And then you've got examples of real world materials, so you've got some glass as well as some metal. And by the way, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting the like button, it really helps out the channel. Once again, we can pause the scene to inspect the whole thing. So you can see over here, it's using this glass material. 
so you can pretty much just copy paste this material and use it in your own games. Then you also got the frame which has a metal black material and pretty much everywhere you look you can see some gorgeous lighting. So if you look up here, yep, you can see just perfect lighting. So it's perfectly calculating all of the lights, all of the light bounces that come from outside, bounce down there and end up in there. If we enable gizmos, we can see everything. So you can see the sunlight comes from there, then over here all of these ones, each individual one has its own light. So you can see it's using a spotlight. And here you've got a mix of real world lights and baked lights. So to see the lighting settings, you can go into window, go into rendering and lighting. And here you can inspect all the settings that they use to make this whole thing look so gorgeous. So you got tons of indirect samples and some direct samples. Then you also have some environment light. And over here you can see all of the baked light maps. And just another lighting relating thing, if you go into window rendering here, you've got the light explorer. And this one shows you all of the lights in the scene as well as all of their parameters. So here you see all their color temperature, the intensity, the range, and so on. And as I mentioned previously, we also got some really good looking particles here. So look at this butterfly. There they are, all the butterflies just flying around. And yep, they are particles and they are built using the VFX graph. So you can just double click and edit it. And yep, here you can see the whole graph, see how it works and everything. Now I've already covered the basics for the VFX graph in another video, so go check that out if you want to see how it works. But yep, you can just take this and pretty much copy paste and use it in your own projects. So you've got the spawn, initialize the particle, you update the particle, and then some output. So you've got these really good looking butterflies. Then you also have some falling leaves. And then here you also have just a whole bunch of dust. So when you put all of that together, you end up with this really awesome scene, looking really, really good. Then afterwards, we go into our full indoor scene. And by the way, here we also see the transition, so tons of exposure, so it's really wide. And then as we go in, yep, it automatically updates. So the exposure transitions from really bright to really dark and then updates. Now that is done using a volume. So once again, if you look in the hierarchy, you can find all of the volumes. So right here, you've got the volumes. And if we turn on the gizmos, we can see. So you've got this volume here on the corridor. This is a local volume with a certain blend distance and it's modifying the exposure. And then outside here, we've got the skylight with a different exposure. So you can see on all the volumes, all of the various post-processing effects that they have. And on the global volume, you can see all the base ones. So you can see screen space reflections, film grain, motion blur. You got some bloom, really nice, some ambient occlusion, a bunch of fog, exposure, tone mapping, and so on. All right, so here we go into our full indoor scene. So the outside light, the outside sunlight is not affecting this scene at all. It's all lit by these local lights. And up there, you also have an emission light. Here you can inspect the material and see that it's using the curve wall. And up here, it's using an emissive light strip and it simply has some emission. So that's that light. Then on the other side, you also see a whole bunch of lights. So these are standard spotlights. And you can also see that they are also using a light cookie right in here. So as I move, yep, you can see it move around. So it looks really good. So all of that looks really great. And we also got a smaller, nice unity sphere. And then over here, we've got another scene. So just a nice chair and a whole bunch of lights. So this is a great example of a fully indoor lit scene. So there's no directional light in here at all. All the directional light stops right in there. All right, so this is the new HDRP template. As you can see, Unity is definitely capable of making some really gorgeous graphics. To play around with it for yourself, just go ahead, create a new project using Unity 2020.2 and select the HDRP template. So this is a great showcase to demonstrate just how good Unity can look. You have all of these tools at your disposal, all of the shaders, volumes, and lights, and it's up to you to put them all together and create something awesome. If you found the video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. Don't forget, for a limited time, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Alright, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.